Welcome to Electron Line, and now for something that's a little bit more fun. Let's try to figure out what the probability is that any two people in a room will have the same birthday. For example, if you walk into a brand new classroom, there's 30 students in the classroom, you may wonder, I wonder if there's anybody else in the classroom that has a birthday on the very same day. Now, since there's 365 days in a year, and only 30 students in the, in the room, you would think that the probability is probably very small. It turns out it's not as small as you think. Now, the equation that we use, and we're going to make the assumption here that there's no February 29th to make things a little bit easier, so we're just working on a 365-day year. The equation goes as follows. The probability that there's at least two people in the room that have the same birthday on the same day is 1 minus the probability that nobody has the same birthday in the room. The equation then is that the probability that at least two students have the same birthday is equal to 1 minus this equation. Now this is 1 minus 365 factorial divided by 365 to the n power, n being the number of students in the room, in this case it would be 30, divided by 365 minus n times well, factorial again, not times factorial, but factorial. You may wonder, well, why is that the correct equation and where did it come from? And then we'll show you how to actually utilize that equation and come up with the right number. But let's assume this way. The probability that nobody, that there's no such thing as two people having the same birthday, can be calculated as follows. When the first person comes along, the probability has to be zero because there's only one person. The probability that there's nobody would be 365 because the birthday of that person could be on any one of the 365 days of the year, and you have to divide that by 365. That means the probability that one person in the room, if that's the only person in the room, doesn't have a common birthday with somebody else, that would be 365 out of 365, or 100%, and 1 minus 100% is 0. When you have a second person walk into the room, now there is a small probability they'll have a birthday on the same day. You then multiply this times 364, because there's now only 364 out of 365 days left that that person could have a different birthday, because this person has a birthday on a particular day, there's one less day available out of the total of 365 days. So that would be the probability when two people walk in the room that they have no birthday on the same date, and then one minus that would be the probability that they do have a birthday on the same date. That would be a very, very small probability, of course. Now the third person walks in the room, now there's only 363 days left that no one has a birthday yet on that day, out of a total of 365 days in the year, and that would be the probability that when three people are in the room, none of the three people have a birthday on the same day. If a fourth person comes in the room, you multiply that times 362, because now there's only 362 days that are available with no one having a birthday on that date, divided by 365. And then you can see the pattern, the next person walk in the room, 361 over 365, and so forth. Taking this and reducing it to a mathematical equation would be equal to this. Notice, first of all, that 365 raised to some exponent. The exponent would be equivalent number of students in the room. In this case, if there's five students in the room, this would become 365 to the fifth power. At the top here, 365 factorial means 365 times 364 times 363, all the way down to times 1. But of course, it ends at 361, or it ends at however many students you have. And then you have to divide that by 365 minus n factorial to get rid of the remaining ones in the numerator. That's how you do that mathematically. So let's see an example of, let's say, five students. Then the probability of at least two of the five students having a birthday on the same date would be 1 minus, you still would have 365 factorial in the numerator, divided by 365 to the fifth power, multiplied times 365 minus 5 factorial. Now, if you would have to calculate 365 factorial, that would take you a very long time, and most calculators couldn't do that. Since we're going to divide that by this, it won't be quite as bad. Just watch and see what happens. This becomes equal to 1 minus 365 factorial divided by 365 to the n power 
times, now 365 minus 5 is 360 factorial, which means that 365 factorial and 360 factorial are almost equal to each other, except the numerator has five more numbers in the multiplication. But in other words, this is equal to 1 minus 365 times 364 times 363 times 362 times 361. And that's where it stops because since you're dividing by 360 factorial, all the other terms would cancel out with this quantity right here. But you still have 365 to the fifth power in the denominator. Now we're ready to calculate this. So we're going to calculate the numerator, which is 365, oh, 365 times 364 times 363 times 362 times 361 equals, then we divide that by 365 raised to the fifth power, and this then becomes 1 minus 0 0.9. 729, 9729, and then if the negative there, plus 1 equals, that would be equal to 0 0.0271 or 2.71%. So almost 3% chance that if five people in the room, that two people, at least two of the people, will have the same birthday. That's a very small percentage, a very small probability. But you'd be surprised when there's 30 people in the room what that would become. So if we now say for 30 people in the room, so this was for five people, n equals five. So now let's go for n equals 30. So this would now become one minus 365 factorial divided by 365 to the 30th power times the quantity 365 minus 30 factorial. And that would become 1 minus 365 factorial divided by 365 to the 30th power times 335 factorial. And then if you write this out, this would become 1 minus 365 times 364 times 363 and on and on and on all the way times the last one you would have would be 336, all divided by 365 to the 30th power. Wow, so just remember that this will just continue. You multiply this together times 362, times 361, times 360, times 359, all the way down to times 336. Now, I've calculated this before, and that ends up being, let's see here, 2.171 e to the 76th power divided by 365 raised to the 30th power, and this would become equal to 1 minus 0 0.2937, put a minus there, plus 1 equals, and that would be equal to 0 0.706, or 70.6%. Imagine that much more than 50-50 chance that when there's 30 students in the room, at least two of them will have a birthday on the same day. In other words, 70%, 7 out of 10 chances for that to happen. That's very unusual. That's not what you would expect because with only 30 students in the room and 365 days, you wouldn't expect that to be the case. Now, what would it take, for example, how many students would you require so that there's 99% chance for two people in the room to have the same birthday? 99% chance. It turns out that number is n equals 57. If there's 57 people in the room, and you do this, this calculation again, then you say that the probability that there's at least two people in the room with the same birthday would be 1 minus 365 factorial divided by 365 raised to the 57 power times 365 minus 57 factorial. And if you do that, the answer would be about 99%. There's almost complete certainty with 57 people in the room that there's going to be at least two people in the room that have a birthday on the same day. And that's the magic of probability.